everybody welcome to our new greenhouse just on our last video Kevin and I finished up this greenhouse and installed this floating row cover on top of our big raised bed garden we've been working hard in the house to start some plants and today from our other greenhouse we were able to move over the lettuce and the kale that will be living in here permanently and allowing for us to harvest off them for food for our family. But today I also want to plant for the very first time in our raised bed garden in here. And today is going to be the very last time we open this floating row cover without there being any plants inside. Today we're going to get planting what we have started in the house. So I'm sitting here by our brand new raised bed garden. Kevin and I built this. It is six feet wide by 22 feet long. It has about 18 inches worth of soil in here. We actually put compost in here for uh, the planting medium. We're going to be using the square foot gardening method in this raised bed garden. It will allow us to really intensively plant our plants in here uh, for winter harvesting. Now our purpose of this entire, entire greenhouse and uh, this raised bed garden is to allow us to grow plants. During the season we're just not able to plant outside in the garden and even though we're not going to heat this greenhouse at all we will be able to grow plants in here over the winter. Those cold hardy plants like lettuce, kale, cabbage, broccoli, cauliflower, turnips, radishes, lots of things we're going to be growing in here. We're also going to be growing on the perimeter in big buckets, uh, crystal licks buckets, which are used for cattle. There's food inside those buckets and then the cattle eat out of them. And then a lot of the farmers, the cattle people don't have anything to do with the buckets. So we've asked our neighbors to just drop those buckets right off at our house and we'll use them to plant in. And then magically they will have some gifts of fresh produce that arrive at their place so we can give back to them and say thank you with some fresh produce. Anyway, today is a very exciting day for me. I get to put my hands in the dirt. I have already put my hands in the dirt a little bit. It's one of the favorite things for me to do. We've got a bunch of plants that we started about six weeks ago. Uh, we started them in the house on heat mats and under grow lights that are ready to come out today. We're going to be planting an area that is about six foot wide by six foot long and then later in a few weeks we'll plant the rest of the garden. We're hoping to do at least one more big planting, maybe two more big plantings to fill up this entire raised bed and this entire greenhouse for some spring harvesting. Now before we get started I want to talk to you a little bit about the square foot planting method. Basically in a raised bed garden you would divide your entire garden into one foot by one foot sections and you could do that a lot of ways. Some people will run wire or string through the entire raised bed. Other people would use like a template that they would plant in and then pick up and move and plant the rest. But one of our amazing subscribers sent us a tool that I want to talk with you about and it's really pretty neat. They sent it to us off of Amazon. We got it in the mail and we opened it up and we weren't quite sure about it. So today Kevin and I, earlier this morning, we were playing around with it to see how it would work and it is actually pretty nifty. So I want to show you how it works and we're actually going to use this instead of coming up with some other way to lay out the grid for the square foot planting. So basically when you press this square down into the soil, it leaves an impression, the square mark down in the soil, so you know where you're supposed to plant. But also, there are a bunch of holes in here. 
And with square foot gardening, you'll plant either one plant or up to 16 plants in one square foot. So this square actually tells you where to plant. If you have to plant one, you'll just plant it in the middle. Um, four, you have the blue circles. Um, nine, you have the yellow circles. And 16, you have the red circles. It's really pretty easy. And you just poke your finger or they actually give you this little gizmo to poke down into the soil and it marks where you should plant. So we think it's pretty nifty and we're gonna use it today. something that kids might really enjoy doing also. Okay, let's go get some plants to put in here. We have three trays that have plants in them. In here we've got spinach and beets. In this tray we have green onions, kohlrabi, broccoli, cauliflower, and cabbage. And in this tray we have cilantro and some turnips. Kevin and I sat down and we created a diagram of where we're gonna plant what. And it really isn't that big of a deal what's planted next to what. In these cases, everything gets along, everything is fine companion plants. But one thing we were thinking about is the height of the plants when they're uh, mature. So we've, we've decided to put the tallest plants in the middle and the shorter plants toward the outside where we'll be harvesting. The other thing that we're thinking about is those plants that are single harvest plants that we're just going to grow until, say for instance, the cabbage is big enough to harvest, those single harvest plants will also put toward the middle. That way, things like lettuce and spinach that we're harvesting continuously week after week, um, it's easier to get to those in the front. We're not having to reach over things. So that's kind of our mindset with planting this garden, this go round. Now we've had a lot of questions and actually some concern about the depth of our um, raised bed garden. A lot of times people will say the widest raised bed garden you should build is four feet. That way it's easy for you to reach across. And I can appreciate that. And in some situations I will agree with you. But because growing space is so valuable for us in this greenhouse, we've decided to do six feet wide because the single harvest veggies will be in the middle. It won't be that big of a deal for us to one time reach over, harvest that, put it on our basket and take it inside to enjoy. So I'm going to start planting some plants that will end up being pretty big. And in those cases, we're only going to be planting one plant. Now online, if you search square foot garden, you'll be able to find lots of charts and diagrams that will tell you which plants you can plant and how many per square foot. First, I'm going to be doing cabbage and broccoli. They are both one plant per square foot. I'm just going to put my seeding square back down and use the little device they give you and mark in the center of these squares. That will tell me where I should plant them. Now, when you're planting one plant, that probably isn't that big of a deal. But when you're getting up to nine plants per square or even 16, it's really nice to have the diagram here to mark out where you should do your planting. Okay, we get to plant our very first plants in this raised bed garden in this brand new greenhouse. This is nice loose soil, loose compost. Just really easy to plant these little guys. First plant, that is cabbage. 
So we have a limited amount of time today in the garden to get these things planted. So I've asked Kevin to come out and give me a hand. And together, the two of us are gonna get this section of the garden planted. Well, we worked together and got this entire six foot by six foot area of the bed all done. I just wanna quickly go over with you uh, what we planted. This is actually gonna be a ton of food and we're so excited. So we've planted cabbage, broccoli, cauliflower, beets, kohlrabi, some radishes that we're starting from seed, these are French breakfast, green onions, more cauliflower, two types of lettuce that we're starting from seed, both of which we received just recently from a subscriber who follows us, just knows how much we like to grow, especially lettuces. So we're starting some Merlot lettuce and Paris Island Koss. Next to that, we are growing a bunch of cilantro, a bunch of spinach, and I think for now, that is about it. Now we get to go back into the house and start a whole nother round of seedlings for this greenhouse. We still have lots of buckets to fill with compost and get some seeds started in there. We're so excited to get started on this project, but it's getting a little bit chilly. And so pretty soon we need to cover these back up so that they can stay warm overnight. But you know, through this project, while we've been building this greenhouse, while we've been building this raised bed, we've gotten some questions, some kind of repeat questions. And so Kevin and I just wanna take a couple minutes to answer some of those things that we've been hearing over the last month or so. Before we can answer questions though, we need to cover these guys back up. There's been a couple questions that we've gotten over and over and over as we've been building this greenhouse and as we've been talking about growing these plants over the winter. So we thought we'd address some of them today. The first question that we got a lot is, you know, how much warmer will it really be inside the greenhouse versus just outside during the winter? And that's, that's a good question. Uh, a lot of that has to do with how sunny the day is, uh, but I can tell you this, we've had this second greenhouse up now for about, I don't know, four or five days that it's been complete. I've had a thermometer in here. I actually have like a remote thermometer where I can measure the temperature in our first greenhouse, in this greenhouse, and then under the floating row cover. Now between the two greenhouses, we've noticed about a three or four degree temperature difference all the time, especially overnight. So if it's getting down to freezing in the original greenhouse, it's been staying about 35, 36, 37 degrees in here. And I think that that's because we have this huge raised bed in here and all of that biomass is really helping, you know, put some heat back into the air overnight. Now the real interesting thing is under the floating row cover, it's even a little bigger of a difference overnight. So if it's 32 degrees in the original greenhouse, about 36 degrees in here, it's about 38 or 39 degrees under the floating row cover. And that's quite a difference when you think about, you know, 32 degrees versus 38 or 39 for your plants. That is a game changer. So those are things to keep in mind if you are thinking about doing something like this. 
the more biomass you can have within your covered greenhouse and covering that as well, the more heat you'll retain when the weather is cold overnight. Right, now during the day, like today for example, the high today was about 40 degrees. And we saw it get up as high as 80 degrees in the greenhouse today. Now that really heats up the soil under the floating row cover and then that heat will come back out overnight and that's what makes that nice difference. So the other big question we've been getting lately is about pollinators throughout the winter and closed up in a greenhouse. What are we going to do for bees and other pollinators with our plants? Well, right now we're growing primarily cold weather plants that don't flower to produce the fruit or the vegetable, vegetable that we're going to be harvesting. For instance, cabbage. It doesn't need a bee, it doesn't need pollination to actually grow the cabbage itself. Same with beets and kohlrabi, broccoli, cauliflower. A lot of those turn into a flower to make seed, but they don't need the flower to create the fruit. Now there are a couple things that we will be needing pollinators for later on in the spring like peas. Uh, they will create a flower and once it's pollinated it will create a little uh, pea pod and at that time we will be rolling up the sides. When we roll up the sides the bees find their way in the greenhouse. Right. Uh, lots of bees in there are other one during the summer so we're not worried about that at all. Right yeah by that time of year it'll be warm enough that we have the doors open we have the sides up and yeah like Sarah said you'll be amazed how many bees actually find their way in the greenhouse. It's not a problem at all. They come right in and get them. But most of what we're going to be growing in here over the cold part of the year doesn't need pollination to produce food. So you guys, I hope you enjoyed spending some time with us planting right. today in our brand new greenhouse and using this floating row cover and this raised bed. Now don't forget that if you are interested in doing any of the things that we've done in here, the greenhouse or the floating row cover and that kind of thing, we get those from the company called Growers solution.com fantastic people uh, wonderful on the phone wonderful to deal with on online uh, so check them out if you are interested if you're enjoying the content that we put out you're enjoying our channel and the lifestyle that we live i hope you'll hit that subscribe button before you leave remember as always the absolute best way that you can help support our homestead is by sharing our videos on all of your social media we hope that you had a good time spending the day with us today. And until next time, thanks so much for stopping by the homestead. Take care and God bless. God bless.